What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another week of clickbait. Like always, Bachelor Nation breakdown. We had a bunch of alum running in the New York Marathon. Natasha is going to give us, give you our clickbait of the week. And then we have a very special guest, um, platinum recording artist, songwriter, singer. Andy Grammer is coming on the podcast. He just performed on Michelle's season of The Bachelorette. Uh, I'm so excited to talk to him. Let's do, um, how are you guys doing? Everyone good? Good. A little like part, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, th thanks yeah. for the uh, th enthusiasm. En yeah, no, enthusiasm. we're just, you know, getting into it. Um, I definitely, I will say I had a like, kind of a long meditation before this, so I'm a little relaxed. You're zen oh, out? Good. Yeah, I'm a little relaxed right now. I'm not hyped up. But I'm going to get hyped up when we talk about uh, my girl Michelle feeling not happy oh, yeah, that was, <laughs> last this week that was yeah sad. I, okay yeah i actually do i have i have my opinions on that as well okay all right well let's do the first one um which is bachelor nation descends upon the new york marathon so yes. if That's you guys a lot of people yeah if you guys haven't seen i believe um i will read it off right now it, it was zach Tasha, tyler matt james Dr. Joe, Pilot Pete, and Dustin Kendrick. Those are the, um, that was everybody that ran mm -hmm. that. So, how do you so guys feel about people. this? I was there. I mean, I was, I was there. It was in New York, but I was eating pizza. Were you cheering them on? <laughs> Did you have the hot coffee? Or, no. Yeah, that's a I, long time no. to cheer people on, like four hours, five hours. Well, it's so insane to me because, like, you just, you have to, what do you stand in one spot and just hope to see the person running in it? Yeah. No. Uh, I, I guess mean, you could move with it, but. Yeah, some people, they do move with it, but I do, I mean, they're going to pass you, you know. Um, I know one of my friends, uh, his business partner runs in it, like, I think every year, I think. He does it quite a bit, and he always posts, like, him running after him. Like if in full like clothes and everything running after him with his sign and stuff like that. Freaking so, nice. um, yeah, I think you have to pass them at some point. You pass them or you say like, hey, man, I'm going to be at this street. So oh, look yeah, out true. or something. Right. It's, it's a big party day, too. Right. Like after and during. Oh, uh, I'm sure I, mean, I feel like I would be exhausted. I feel you like have to have people cheering you on. Have you all ever run distance? Any distance? No, but I want to run a marathon just because I want to have, um, I want to drink a beer after. Oh, well, you, you want to drink a lot it. of beer. Yeah. I've done I a just half marathon it. and that was plenty for me. I could not imagine after doing half doing another So half. the ha the half, is it 12 miles? 13. 13, 13. 13 miles. And then the mm -hmm. full is 26, right? Okay. So yeah. what was your time? Because they gave us the times for everyone. What was me? your time? For yeah, a half? For a half. Yeah. Oh, it was over two hours. And really? it's like a good goal is to be under two. But I was very mm. slow. I just wanted to finish. My toenails right. fell off. I couldn't freaking move. It Oof. was nuts. But it was for St. Jude's. So it was really yes. awesome to run through St. Jude like in Memphis. And Aww. we were like crying and emotional. And there's people cheering. And you need people cheering and music and all that stuff too. But the New York Marathon, it looks f fun ish. Did you tr wait, did you train? Are you a runner? Absolutely not. No. I, I did this in PT school, so I was quite a bit younger. Um, but I trained for up to 10 miles. And then, so mm. then when you're actually running it, the last three are just pure adrenaline. But it's yeah. Yeah. it's kind of brutal. Well, you have to train. Like, you have to... Um, you have to cross-train, too. You, you, yeah, and you have to, like, get your heart rate. Um, mm -hmm. You have to train with keeping your heart rate um, low. That's, that's the way to do it. It seems like mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Joe... Blew past everyone. He ran in. Crushed like, it. Yeah, he ran in like two, like under two and a half hours. I Are think. Are you joking? No, no, three hours. Three hours. Was it three? three? I saw on this article. I thought it was two. Still, though. No, no, three hours. He ran it in three. I saw I Peter was, was like five hours over five hours. I'm like, did he walk? For five you know, minutes? the person who <sighs> the person who won it or won, finished first, I should say, and not won it. I mean, they're all winners because they did this, but um. They finished in like two hours yeah. or something okay. like that. Um, I think I saw on his page that That's he insane. put the time on his page. Let me see. Uh, well, um, I think the best the best photo captioned of anyone was Pilot Pete because he's just he's like waving. Three twenty one. It's just, <laughs> just, just twenty one. Good, oh, good wow. for Joe. Yeah. All right, so Doctor Joe had the best uh, score, but I think Tasha and Zach were second. Um, oh really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Their videos yeah. of her getting emotional were very sweet. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, it's... the best pictures. I sent that to her. I was like, this is the oh. best picture. They were so cute. Yeah, I really, um, it does seem like a big thing to do. I mean, I'm definitely, I was always a sprinter. Uh, I ran track and I was a sprinter distance. The The longest I did was like the 400 meter, you know, <laughs> which it's like all sprinting, which was brutal yeah. as well. Different muscle um, fibers for different Yeah, so distance. I... I think about running distance and I have a bad knee and I'm like, oh, my God. But then I'm like, oh, it kind of looks fun. Like, you know, you're doing it for a good cause and all, you know, shout out to all the causes that they did. They did it for. And St. Jude, I mean, I donate to them every year. I really love St. Jude as well. Um, And yeah, I mean, I think it's something that it's meaningful. And I think that's one of the reasons why they do it. And whether it's, you know, two hours, three hours, you know five hours, six hours, <laughs> however long it takes. Go, I, they go. I think I, um, yeah, I have a bad knee too, but I think I could do it. I think I could do it in a, a good time. I think I could get a good time. Do you like a good time? Jane? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I lift, but I'm not like a crazy, like, you know, I'm like a, a casual lifter. Yeah. That's I, important though, too. It's not, it's a oh, wait. But oh. what's a good time? A good, I would say, I think a good time um, I would say like Dr. Joe's time is a really good time. Yeah, that's a I, yeah. I would say that's a really good time. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I would say four in the fours, like four in the yeah. f- four hours. Hey, you guys, if you guys want to do it as a, as clickbait, we could do the New York Marathon next year. Are we well, done? I'm not making any damn promises. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, then let's. Um, I'll be there. Look, I could be there cheering on. I mean, after I ran my first half marathon, I tried to do another one, and I wasn't cross training. I was just trying to run and my freaking knees hurt. Yeah. So you like have yeah. to do like you have to build muscle or else Joe, you'd be a freaking string bean. I have my I have a bad knee too. We let's just stick to um, Yeah, let's podcasts. We'll cheer them on. Yeah. We'll cheer all of them on. I think <laughs> they said that um I think they said that Zach does it like every year, right? Yeah, um, I, I think like Zach's Matt running marathons Tyler. all over the world. So all year, right? Yeah. yeah. So we'll 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 be there to cheer Zach and Tasha on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, congrats yeah. um to all of them and anyone that did run in the New York Marathon. It's quite the feat. So congrats. Okay, great. Um next <laughs> we're we have, inspired. We're uh, inspired. <laughs> uh Caitlin Bristol joins um the Dancing with the Stars tour. Okay. That yes. Girl. She okay. loves to stay busy. <laughs> She's She's still going. Yeah, I yeah, think she's she, not on tour right now for her own like for live a podcast, podcast, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I wonder um how long that tour is and like does what like when one stops and when I think starts it and... wraps here in Nashville in December. I'll be at the one on December twelfth. And I think that's the last one. And then the oh, dancing okay. tour starts the next month. Dancing okay. I did dancing with the stars tour. Oh yeah. Oh, and how, how was, was it? it? Um it was incredible. Like it was such a good time. It was like probably one of my favorite like time periods in my life. Probably. Oh, was that when you got to wear the same outfit over and over because nobody saw you? Well, no, no. What? Wait, what? Did we talk about that last week? You said you love being on tour. Oh yes, I did. Oh yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Yes, that that was actually that was it. Um, but why? Uh, well, so I did it for the whole tour so i think i was on tour for like two and a half months because the second mm. part of the tour this guy juan pablo was supposed to go on and he like hurt his abdominal muscle or whatever he did so he oh, wow. canceled so um i stayed on yeah. and in the, the third day of the tour yeah jenna who was my partner asked me she's like do you want to dance anymore and i'm like no I'm like I'm, <laughs> I'm like I, I really don't want to and she's like okay she's like you're not going to be offended if we ask you to stop dancing i'm like no, no. so all i had to do all i had to do was host and i just host it like oh, the opening fun. and a few times in between so during oh, that's um fun. during ha- well it's not called halftime what's like the intermission intermission Interme- during yeah. intermission i would go up and shower and then i would play like video games and then i would come down and uh, just close out the tour uh, That's so fun. it's fun but is i'm it assuming all like group dances or is it partners too it's both it's both oh, okay. so they do a bunch of group dances and they do like it's but it's all the um prof- it's really it's really a tour for the professionals on dancing mm-hmm. with the stars um gotcha but i'm sure caitlin's gonna have a few dances um yeah in it because she's a good dancer so she's yeah, so good she's great it's yeah, pretty crazy when you think about like she was the ba- Caitlyn was the bachelorette how many years ago? I don't know. It's been how a long while. ago was that? 
it's probably been i would say six? S- probably six or seven years oh okay and she's still getting cast it um to do everything yeah yeah mm-hmm. i mean i think she just has like a real i mean it seems like she has a really uh go-getter mentality and very much you know, so. she, she loves being busy and she knows what she, she wants to do too yeah, she's like, yeah, wine like label drives. podcast. It all like, even like I think about the names of stuff. I don't know which one she did first, but mm-hmm. like her podcast, I think came first. And then she was like, well, it's called Off the Vine. I'm doing a wine label. Like she knows it exactly kind of just what all, she wants yeah. to do. And she's yeah, also talented. I mean, yeah. it's not like we go on reality TV and then like you you get um, a social media following, but to actually be a host of anything, like you have to work at it and be somewhat talented Mm -hmm. in it and i think she's Mm -hmm. one of the best that has come out of the franchise all right great next uh next article uh natasha you have something to say about this so i'll let you take the lead (laughs) uh michelle had a tough episode of the bachelorette this week so um for our listeners for our listeners uh michelle had a group date where the guys basically broke out and paid her zero attention um I had which, secondhand embarrassment. It, which seemed the like guys. the like I was watching it. Um, I was watching it, thinking like, "Wow, that's such an an opportune time to step in and flirt with her." Right. Uh, um, but go ahead, Natasha. What do you? Got no, to say? I want to. I want to hear what you guys have to say because mine might get a little long winded, and I don't want to do that. Okay. All <laughs> right. Know, so, so yeah. <laughs> I I so I I watched it and thought like. I'm not like a real broy guy. Like I'm not gonna be like, let's bro out and wrestle with stuffed animals, even though that's what they had to do. Um, but I would have hated, <laughs> I would have hated the activity, like from jump. So I would have just been miserable. Mm-hmm. So I would have probably went over and talked to her because, like, that's what I would have wanted to do. Yeah, um, would have been more comfortable doing that. And it, the Bella twins hinted at this last week on the podcast, but we didn't really fully see it. And yeah. I was I was even expecting it, and then seeing it was still surprised by how terrible it looked. Like they yeah, wanted I mean, to play duck duck goose, and they were like, "Oh yeah, Michelle can come." And they were punching each other in the stomach. They were like, "Michelle, you need to step out." Okay, so yeah, you can you can sit this one out. You can sit this what one out. Doing? It's like like we were on our season. We were like damn near fighting to get to freaking stand next to him. Like yeah. we so, were not even about to exclude him from anything. Yeah. Okay, so the only thing I'm going to say to defend the guys before you go, because I know we're going to destroy the guys right now. The only thing I'm going to say, but this is, and this, I'm actually asking both of you this almost as a question too. Um, Mm -hmm. Because when you're on the show, you spend so much time with um, the other cast members opposed to the lead. Do you think, you know, self consciously, you're just like, like these are the people that I'm, I'm, spending time with so i'm not really paying it like you know what i'm saying Mm -mm. no my question to you guys is because it was such a big group of guys do you think like basically every guy was there besides two the two that went on the dates um do you think that it was a i don't want to step on toes situation more so than let's just bro out no i i think it was no I, i think it was let's just bro out I, I, I think it was, it was, yeah, I think, it, yeah. I feel like I one know. of the guys even said something about, well, I didn't want to like jump the gun and steal time with her. I don't, I don't know. It was just, it seems like up to this point, they've all been pretty adamant about spending time with her. And it was just like a sudden change on this one. It was very, maybe they thought they were going to show off in front of her or like mm. show their big muscles in front of her and impress her. Yeah, but it didn't even, it, they didn't seem to care if she was there or not. That's yeah, what yeah. was sure. the. That's what was the thing. And yeah. also, and I don't, and I think, okay, so, whew, y'all, let me, let me just. Mm. All right. So it was, it was hard to watch this. It was very hard to watch this um, for a few reasons. And I'm going to try to pick my words carefully here when I say this and I talk about this. Um, so Michelle mentioned how she would make time to make little moments for things and how she would be the one to try to do these things so I think sometimes in relationships and I definitely resonate with this it's like when you are such a um, proactive person you're like well 
I'm free this day, this day, this day. You know, it's a it's a lot of um, uh, I'm just going to say for the sake of this conversation, masculine energy that you put out where you are the one you are the initiator of things. Right. So I don't know if seeing that at least watching this, it was like. So they just going to wait for her to be like, hey, like, I, you know, at one point she's like, hey, Clayton, help me with this. You know, it's like her having to basically say, help me do something in order for him to understand like, oh, well, let me step up and do something, you know, where she had to kind of um, exude this feminine energy to them instead of them just stepping up and kind of for coming forward. So in my mind, I was like, is it that these guys, because I've seen Martin on um, when they had their date, when they were like kind of all going crazy on that thing that everybody got sick on, that Will got sick on. Um, I saw Martin pull her to, to the side and say, hey, like, how are you doing? You know, Martin had a one on one. He wasn't there. Um, and I feel like sometimes in those situations, and I think she's a very strong woman. And as a black woman, sometimes that strongness is taken for masculine energy, if that makes sense. And so when I was watching this, I was like, oh, <laughs> like they aren't paying attention to her because they just think she's good. She's fine. She's, she's chilling. Like they're not and I don't think that it's a conscious thing. I just think that when I was watching it, I was like, you know, and I don't want to bring race into this as a, you know, if she were white. I just think that as black women, and I'm going to keep it at that, as black women, we exude so much strength, so much power. We're always good. We're always great. We're always fine. And it's like, no, we're not always fine. And that even when she was talking to Caitlin and she said, I don't want to seem like this diva, basically, like pay attention to me, pay attention to me. But it's like, actually, you're the bachelorette. Please, yeah. Diva out, girl. Please yeah, she was like, like I, don't, What's going I don't want on? to be the center of attention. I'm like, you are the center of you attention. Are the, exactly. You are the prize. Exactly. But, but even think... that mindset that she didn't want to feel that way, I think that that all has to do with the things that she said in her poem about not feeling seen and not wanting to be this person and kind of shrinking herself and kind of just going through the motions of things and how and, and why she was so disappointed, you know? Um, so it was, it was, it was, I watched it and I was like, damn, like, I, girl, I feel you. It's sad. It's really sad. Every, every episode, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. There's so many things that are happening and coming up and, and that are um, being, that are, that are, that are happening, that are so important. And I think that Michelle is doing a great job of not only being vulnerable, but also um, holding these guys accountable. And if, you know, she she waited to say something. And, you know, I just if she would have said something in like, you know, in the middle of the day, I just wonder how the energy just would have changed. I mean, I'm glad yeah. that, she, you know, of course, it played out the way that it did because the guys felt real shitty. <laughs> she yeah. came to the cocktail I party and they're she all... had to address it like that. But I feel like their response was actually good. I mean, that was telling, yeah. too, to see which guys were like, I'm so sorry for that. This is how I'll make it up to you whatever mm -hmm. i think the response yeah. was good it just kind of sucked that she even had to say anything at all yeah but of I course she did say, it in a beautiful graceful way yeah i will say we have been nate stands on this podcast since the beginning but his conversation with her i was a, i was a little disappointed i was he said um from what i remember you are seen my actions may not show it, mm -hmm. but you are seen. I said, oh, and he boy. didn't say much else. That was about it. Yeah, I was like, well, or, or again, it could be editing. We don't see their whole conversations. We all know that, you know, we've been on the show. But just from that part, it was like, OK, but I'm about to start showing you. My actions mm -hmm. are about to start showing you. Know what I mean? You're like, yeah. we're all still here. Yeah. You're, you're seeing we're here seeing you. You should know that already. Yeah. It's like, hmm. Yeah, yeah so that I, that was my little, oh, that was a, that, that hurt a little bit, Nate, because we was, we was standing for you. <laughs> I also want to know what you guys think. We had, um, we had, what did you guys think of the other one-on-one -on -one date, the, the one-on-one -on -one dates? Um, um, Martin. Oh, with Rick. Martin and, and oh, Rick, yeah. I love Rick so much. We had Rick's, him on the podcast. Rick's story was, was, I, I, Rick's story was heavy. Yeah, like, I didn't his, expect his, that, his, but. Yeah. Yeah, so good. Heavy. I thought uh, both of the dates though were really good. I like the way that Martin, Martin me too, flipped it. 
Yeah, because me too. I was like, oh, he's not about to get this rose. Yeah. And then he flipped it and was like, you know what? My communication isn't always great. I was not trying to come at you like that. I do think you did the right decision because I'm here and he's gone. And but I'm but again, it's that it's the same thing we said on the podcast. Not everyone is all bad. Not everyone is all good. People have all these different sides of them. And I think the way that he connected with Jamie was just in a different way than, of course, a partner, a partnership is someone that you would want to date. Right. I know a lot of I have a lot of guy friends that I love to pieces, but I would never date them. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, because it's just it wouldn't work out. So um, speaking of friends and speaking of guy friends, I think we should get into the clickbait. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I do. I also do. I, I think Martin handle that i was i was shocked by that because i i that i was like he's going home oh and yeah he, me yeah. too i was like uh-oh but he turned it around and mm. i think that the way that he did that and 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 acknowledged like my bad yeah. i thought that was really great yep um and so our clickbait of the week here we go uh we are talking about how to hold friends accountable without breaking up your friendship um it's funny because i was just talking about this with my sister uh, over the weekend. And I think that it is, um, she was just asking my advice about something and she was just like, you know, I have to learn how to like, not always insert myself into things, but she has this, you know, we want to help our friends. We want to help the people in our lives be better, be great, all the, all the things. Um, but we do have to, I think, find ways to, give information or give our opinion when it is solicited. Sometimes you just want somebody to listen, right? You don't need the, well, I told your ass, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I approach things sometimes. So I just have to keep my mouth shut because it's going to come across as brash and judgmental. Right. So but, but there's certain friends who know you mean well, right? And so certain friends are like, Okay, all right, Tia, go ahead, give it to me. What what right. what's going on? You know, and so they know that you are only saying this in a in in whatever way that you're saying it, but it's to help, you know, and not to hurt. Um, so I think that with this clickbait, it was very interesting. There were a few things that that I highlighted in the article. Um, so one thing that they said to do when you instead of just being like, I told you so, or, you know, girl, you fucking up, or guy, you fucking, whatever, you know, sorry, I'm F-bombing today. Ooh, yeah, you good. are. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, when you don't want to tell someone that they're just messing up left and right, you can remind them of the goal that they put in place. And, you know, sometimes, um, like, a big thing for uh, my sister was finding like the job that she had. She would always complain about her job. She would always complain about this, complain, complain about that. And I, instead of it would be like, girl, just quit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's easier said than done. It's just, well, getting to like, why don't you want to work here? Have you looked for other things? You know, what is your goals in life? Is this somewhere you want to be long term? You know, asking those different questions instead of, just kind of being like, if I were you, I would quit, <laughs> you right? Know? Yeah. which is easier said than done. And another thing that the article said that was really great was um, sometimes you are not equipped to help your friend or your family or your boyfriend or your husband or your girlfriend or your wife in what's going on. You sometimes need to hire a trainer if you want to really get that goal weight. You have to go seek a therapist if you really want to... Um, you know, get through whatever problem is is bothering you. And I thought that was a really big thing because normally with the people in our life, we just want to help. So how can I help? How can I help? That's always me too. I'm like, how can I help? How can I help? And sometimes we can hurt a situation or hurt a friendship by giving the wrong advice or by just being open to giving that energy to someone because they're not ready to receive it from you as a friend, right? Right. Um. So my question to my Joe and my Tia is, have you guys ever been in a situation with a friend that you either really wanted to tell them you knew they were going down to the death of destruction <laughs> and you were like, oh, OK, I, you decided to tell them and you feel like you shouldn't have or you just you held your tongue and you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, I feel like I've been in both situations. I lost a friend, um, gosh, it's been a while now, I was in college, 
um, because I saw some messages from her boyfriend at the time. It's now her husband, but her boyfriend mm-hmm. at the time, he was just dogging her and not treating her how I thought she should be treated. And I let her know, hey, I love you so much and I'm letting you know this ain't it. Like, this is not good. Well, she got upset with me and this isn't related to a goal, but it is something where you want to speak your mind and like support your friend and their happiness and she kind of right. put it back on me and was like, I don't need to hear that from you. And it put, you know, a wedge between us and our mm-hmm. relationship hasn't been the same since. Um, so I was like, well, should I have just held my tongue? I don't know. But it just, it didn't feel right to not let her know how I felt. But it mm-hmm. is what it and is. I mean, if, it, if that was how it turned out, it was probably going to turn out that way anyway. Right. Um, and especially if she wasn't in the place to hear that. And obviously she wasn't. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. like, since that, I've been kind of hesitant to speak my mind, even though it could be beneficial in other friendships. Right. So, okay. So, before you go, Joe, I'm going to say to that point, Tia, I think the article talks about protecting your energy. And y'all know I always say that. So, it takes just as much energy for you as a friend to say something like that. But it also takes just as much energy to take that information in and actually... Uh, reciprocate it and see it and then put action behind it. So not everyone, like what, not everyone um, is ready for a happy, secure relationship. And of course, that's what you want for your friend. That's what you want for your family. That's what you want for the people in your life. And so my dad used to always say this thing, you know, if you like it, I love it. Because he knows that I can't change your mind about someone that you're with. So if, you know, unfortunately, there's people who are who deal with abuse and different things and relationships that they have to get to a point where they feel, of course, you want safety for your friends, you know, but emotional abuse is such a big thing. And you, you the person that's in the relationship has to get to a point where they feel unloved or unhappy and it's like you know some people i know they stay in relationships because this guy actually shows up for my kids and they do this and they do you know you don't we never know why the draw is there we can only see the objective side because we want our friends and family to be happy um but in hindsight i feel like if the information is solicited then I feel like th- then the person's ready to hear it. But you knowing you probably were like, I would want to know this information. Right. So it's not like you did anything wrong, but also could you also continue to be such a close friend to someone knowing that their person maybe talks to them in this way when they don't, you know what I mean? So maybe the relationship and the, the article also talked about that too. Some friendships just aren't meant to last forever mm-hmm. and that's okay too, you know, and we still wish her well and we hope that she's course, great and I hope things are better and, you know, people work through things and people change and all those different things happen. So, um, you know, it's, 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 you shouldn't feel bad, but also I feel like the outcome was still going to be the same as you said, right. and they're married and we wish them well. Joe. Yes. Um, I, so, uh, I'm always going to be honest, uh, with my friends and, you know, I'm not always right either. So I could give my advice and it could be wrong or, or whatever, but, um, I would never hold back on saying anything to my friends, especially if I think, um, they're in a bad place or they're making a huge mistake. Mm-hmm. I would say, I'll use you, uh, Natasha, as an example. Like after Paradise, my attitude with you is more like, it's going to be fine. Like, because I was more focused on like what you have to do to feel better. And trust me, it's going to take some time, but you're going to be good. Opposed to more or less like, I would say, hearing you out and letting you vent more. Um, Right. My attitude was more like, just follow these few steps and you will be fine. Um, so I think I, I would, I would, and that I would say it's because majority of my friends are very uh, similar to me and most of them are guys. And that's just kind of the way we deal with problems. It's just they like, probably know what to expect too from you, especially your close friends. They know you're going to be honest. Yeah. And it's just like, kind of just like call it what it is where um, we all, we talked about this lap, last episode where we all just operate differently in, in, Mm -hmm. you know natasha you and i handle problems differently so i think it's just recognizing um the way you go about addressing that issue uh 
right. uh, is what like I want to work on and what I'll continue to work on as you know, just a person and a friend. So that would be my um, philosophical insight. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that that's a big thing. And when you have, and you, like you said, we talked about this on the on the last podcast, how people handle conflict differently and how people handle and actually just process things differently, right? So regardless of it, when you solicit the information, you have to be ready for what the other person's going to say. And you're clearly asking them for a reason because you value their opinion. To sum this up, an equal exchange of energy, uh, the, 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 the article talks about that, and I think that that's like the most important thing that, Tia, when you decide to tell your friend something, you're giving energy. And when you decide to receive someone something from someone, you're, you're getting energy. And I think that we all have to be more conscious of the place that we are in our life. If I am going through a breakup, I am not giving my friend relationship advice right now. I can't do right. that, girl, because I hate everyone. You know right. what I mean? So Makes like, I, but I'm now, con I'm now um, conscious of that. Whereas I've had girlfriends who are going through a divorce, who's like, girl, that man, let me tell you, can you trust him? And I'm like, oh, where did this come from? It's like they're projecting on TV. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that we have to be more, um, you know, when we're giving advice, when we're getting advice, we want our friends to be great. And also, you know, the, the level of, um, knowing that someone may not receive something just how you want them to and how you deal with that. And I think coming back to The Bachelorette, that's exactly what happened between uh, Martin and and Michelle. She did not receive what he was trying to say in the way that he meant to say it. So how do we recover from that if it does happen? And, and sometimes you can't recover. And, you know, I have a friend that I loved to pieces and we were very, very close and we are not close anymore. And I think um, I wrote this down and it says when you're talking to someone uh, as yourself and as you do, if the energy feels off, then that's your sign to back off. So if I'm telling you something and you get all like, Ugh! OK, back off. Right. And sometimes you can lean back in and, and you can have that transfer of energy and it goes back and forth. But if it isn't then, you know, sometimes friendships just have to end and, and you grow and you wish them well and you love them and um, from afar. <laughs> I'll yep. say that. All Ooh. right. Well, you know, friendships, they last, they don't, uh, you know, <laughs> people, people love to each other. They hate each other. You can take advice. You can't. All right. Uh, <laughs> it it's, it's life, baby. It's life. It's all about how we deal with it. Right. Yes. That is life. And we um so right now we have a very special guest this guy is a platinum singer songwriter his videos on youtube and his songs have hundreds of millions of downloads everyone please welcome andy grammar to the podcast andy what's up how are you welcome to clickbait good to be here how are you all we're good, good. we're chilling andy you are where right now Tell i'm us. in honolulu for sure so it is not cold it yeah, is not cold. Feel, no, it's oh, beautiful out here. We're all freezing where we are. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Where are you guys coming from? <laughs> well, New York, Chicago, and Nashville. Yeah, I'm in Nashville. Oh, so, mm -hmm. right. so, Andy, um, so you, you performed this week on The Bachelorette. Yeah. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Before you blew up, you performed. You were a street performer for four years, right? Yeah. No way. Okay. Where? So. Uh, in Santa Monica, actually, in California. That was like oh, my dope. day job. It was pretty wild. Okay, so if you could, like compare and contrast performing on <laughs> the like performing on the Bachelorette for two people in this intimate scene that's being recorded for television, um, what was that like? And then like comparing it to like being a street performer, and then like performing in front of a huge audience. Uh, you know, the the street performing in the Bachelorette was similar in that you are like there were a lot of times where you would street perform for just one person that was stopped. And there's like an awkward and an intimacy to that. That's kind of cool, you know, okay. but I would say it's, it's similar. You just get over the fact like, oh yeah, this is going to feel a little bit weird and that's okay. <laughs> and I, I'm still going to like push through this awkwardness to see if we can make you feel something, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you watch the episode? Um, I didn't get to see it yet. I've been on traveling, so I'm well, excited to watch it. It was great. 
I will say there was not a moment of awkwardness uh, oh, watching it. So watching it, it was so nice. It, I mean, and it just the song, the words in the song really resonated with everything. The com- I mean, you haven't seen it yet, but you'll see yeah. um, the conversation that they have at dinner is just so heartfelt. And then just like the lease on life, like the whole it all just went together so perfectly. And we and I was at home like, oh, did they oh, know he was going to perform? Wait a so minute. Sweet. <laughs> it was you know, really it's like, good. At a lot of times, um, I think that music can be a social lubricant of sorts. I think we all need that. And so I you do kind of go, I've done the show, I think, two or three times now. And mm-hmm. you can see that the two of them are coming up and they're just super sweet. And you're like, oh, I can help this right now. Right. It's, it's normally oh. an awkward silence during dates, too. There's no AC running, no music, no nothing in the background. So it's yeah. so awkwardly silent. <laughs> but to have something like that, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah, and you you become less worried about, you go from like, oh man, I hope, I hope I nail this, to like, oh man, let me create a little sound bed here for you guys to like, yeah. you know, vibe out to. Did, Did you, you get notice? to meet them? Yeah, I met them. They're fantastic. Did you, so what do you think about them? Do you think they had chemistry? I think so. I, I, you know, I've, I've been a part of a reality show. I did Dancing with the Stars. And so I know oh, that when you go through something that intense with someone else, it can be it can actually bring you closer together in some ways, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I saw them both like working through it together. Oh. Okay. So lease on life. It's a, it's a very positive uplifting song and you're a positive yeah. uplifting guy. That's your thing. Correct. Sure. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but like, okay. So my question is like a lot of uplifting, like positive songs, usually with artists, I like, don't they come from like a dark place? Like, did you, do you oh, ever feel like when you're okay. So when you're writing this song, like, um, like, where were you, like, in life, mentally, when you wrote something um, like this? It was definitely gnarly. There was, uh, like, quarantine is occurring. Um, I am uh, can't do the thing that makes me, the, like, the happiest. To yeah. be around mm-hmm. people and try to, like, create music that makes us all feel better about being alive, that's my favorite. And when you get mm-hmm. everybody to do it together and there's something about everyone singing together... It is all like almost spiritual. I don't want to get pretentious, but if you've ever been to a show and you felt the unity of everybody singing together, it's like, oh my God, yeah, this incredible. is awesome. Um, and I couldn't yeah. do any of that. And, and the world was falling apart. And my daughter was born in my living room the second week of oh, COVID. Wow. Wow. Nice. So I had like the worst uh, environment that I've ever been a part of for me personally of like, Oh my God, I'm not allowed to leave my house. I'm a super extrovert. And this is my nightmare. Um, <laughs> and so while this is all happening, I also have the sweetest thing that is just undeniably great. So it's oh. pretty hard to be overly bummed out when you have this new little girl in your life. Oh, yeah, And you got to be room. home and not on tour like this. Yeah. It's such a, a double edge. So she's like my little light that no matter what's going on, it's like things can't be that bad. And she did make it feel like all new, which is really cool. So I kind of came from that place of like immense despair. But while in the despair, you're like, I just, this is, she's so great, you know? Yeah. So it is a little bit, and it's her first one that I have uh, two daughters and the older one is four now. And she's very, like, gets real intense when I'm playing it on her way to preschool. Like who's, (laughs) which one is this? Is this mine? Or is this in oh. Or did you write this one for mama? Like, I need to know how to take this in right now. Like, which one is this? And so she calls that's it, so when cute. she gets in the car and she wants it, she says, like, can you play Izzy's song? And that's oh. the one she's talking about. Yeah. Oh, oh, so she was the inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so, so cute. Oh, my God. It's so great. sweet. I love that. Yeah. That, I mean, wow. And so did you pick that song or did the show want you to pick that song? Or how did that go about picking the song for the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have two singles out right now we have that one another one called damn it feels good to be me and uh if this one just seemed like it feel a little bit, a little bit better it feels mm-hmm. good to be me it's a little bit more of like a rambunctious party mm-hmm. <laughs> and that would be it seemed this one seemed to fit a little bit better <laughs> yeah yeah for yeah. sure and honestly it really when you watch it you're gonna be like huh i did that uh, <laughs> it looks yeah. like so really great cool. really it, it really does um come and i together was genuinely well. so excited to play Mm -hmm. Like there are seasons where you're like running from thing to thing to thing. And it's not that it diminishes how much you like to play, but it's just like, that's a part of life. This was, I hadn't played any music. Mm -hmm. We we ended playing the one song. We're like, can we run that back? Do you guys want to hear a set? (laughs) Can we just keep going here? This is so nice to have all my toys set up. 
<laughs> and I know there's only two of you, but I would love to keep going. So the Bachelorette um, and the Bachelor franchise. Do you are do you watch it? You said you've been on a few times. Do you watch it? Do you yeah, have any I, we'll like check in. I don't, I'm not like a super diehard, but I, it's it's fascinating. Oh my god, it's like an amazing thing to watch. And when you're right ne- up up close next to them, you're a little more invested. I saw a few tweets that said, um, "Yay, a performer we finally know on the show." <laughs> so that has to feel good. <laughs> Yeah. I would say it's always funny to be the surprise. Right. Like in my life as a as a musician, there's these different times where you're like the surprise at a wedding or the surprise at um, some, some radio promo thing. You're like the big surprise. And you're always like, I hope these people know who I am. This is about to be so miserable. Right. You people see it on their face people immediately do. too. Like, oh, cool. <laughs> Welcome. We, we, we're huge fans. But yeah, this is great. It really worked out. That's um really so you uh how long have you been married for? You've been married for a while, right? Almost ten years, yeah. Okay, nice. wow. Would you um so like watching the show, do, could you ever admit like picture yourself dating in a scenario like this before you were married? Man, you know, I don't want to come off judgy. So I'm no, just like, please, please, my please that's here. what we I want we I want love uh, judgy. Yes. I, I think want, that it, that there judgment. are like having been te- married for ten years, an old fogey at this point. Uh, I think that the things that make it last are not um, like attraction and beauty. Like that's like probably seven on the list of like things mm-hmm. that'll make a relationship last. And mm-hmm. I think that it would be very hard to just be surrounded by super hot people for this long mm-hmm. and make correct decisions for a long term <laughs> relationship. Would be but you're you're really dodging landmines at that point to get to like what is actually going to be something that's a long lasting beautiful relationship. It's totally possible, and I guess it has worked sometimes, right? Yeah, like there's right, these yes. success stories. The, yes. the the thing that's good about it is going through something really hard with someone else. Yeah. Now doing it with someone else while they're with someone else sounds pretty intense. Yes. Uh, but you know, it's possible. It's all possible. Who knows? Yeah. I was saying the thing of like even just regular dating right now with dating apps is like. So well, it's changed. I mean, it's completely different. It's very have based 20 on conversations first at the same time. Is like, oh my god, I don't know yeah. how to do that. That's really hard. Lot. Yeah. How long I did you? That I think it's hard to get to. Uh, it's like a video game, and starting a new video game, the first level is like always kind of fun, but it takes like <laughs> grit to get to the middle and to the end and to keep moving. And there's always some sort of thing like, should we keep going with this or just like start a new game? And I think that like dating apps is like really hard that way. That's true. Mind blown. If you have all these different (laughs) options, you're like, well, I don't know. This starts to seem like there's this like myth that there is one person you'd find that it wouldn't get hard, that everything would be easy the whole time. And that's like hilarious bullshit. Like everybody (laughs) has terrible things about them. And so the, the real truth is like, all right, what can you handle and, and who do you want to like, who do you want to be a mirror way. for and show them like, uh, the, the, someone told me early on, like relation, uh, marriage is like a mirror and you actually see everything about the other person. And if you see everything about me, that's going to be, there's going to be some stuff in there you don't want to see. You right. know? Yeah. So I think that, uh, for real, for a real long lasting relationship, this is a pretty intense way to get started. I would say that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Could it work? Sure. Totally. Anything can work. All yeah. right. If you could give Michelle um, dating or, or relationship, long lasting marriage advice, uh, what would it be? Um, who, who do you want to start an emotional business with? That's what mm. I'd say. Like, who, who, and, 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 and can you, who, who feels like you can really like build that, build that with and, and looks are important, but not that important for a long lasting relationship. I think. My wife is hot. It's awesome. But like, <laughs> but as you get 10 years in, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot is cool. But like, are we spiritual together? Do we right. like the same things? Do we want to build a family right. the, the same way? Do we want to like, do, do my ticks annoy the crap out of her so much that it's a problem? Um, yes. I'll, and then I think, you know, I don't know, maybe it's getting too, too deep and intense, but, but like, is she down to be honest about her flaws? Right, that right, is where it starts to get real intense because you're someone who lives with this person, and me too. Yeah. Am I down? Yeah, are you? Is, is she, I was does she bring that out of me? Are we down to have like real conversations about like, oh wow, I'm pretty ugly in this way. I'm going to try to get better at it. Or, and uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people don't can't get there, and then 
then you're in trouble. At what time in your relationship did you start having those conversations? Probably, I don't know. I think also like when you're young, you think you're being honest, but you're not. Yeah, yeah. Mm, like, yeah like 20, I agree with that. You think 20, you know are you honest? You I'm don't? like, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. And then at 37, I'm like, Oh no, I was not, I wasn't honest with myself. I didn't even know what that was. Right, right. Right. I think that I think with what you're saying, it's like, yeah, you were honest as a 20 year old, but yeah. as a 37 year old, that honesty doesn't look the same because you've grown so much and you've just experienced so much more life. Ex- so absolutely. much more life, so much more self-awareness. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yes, for sure. I get that. I get that so much. I think it's like, you know, I'm definitely not married, but I think that with what you're saying, it's almost like you kind of have to have those conversations, you know, you're 20, you're 25, you're 30, you're 35, like with yourself, like, yeah, like check yourself, like, wait a minute, like, am I being honest with who I am and what really makes me happy? And you then have that conversation with your partner, right? Yeah. And are you down mm-hmm. to grow together? It sounds cheesy, but it's just real. Yeah. yeah. And I think also... Because when you talk about length of time being with someone, which I think is like the goal, right? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that like loosely the goal of this show is to find someone that will be with you forever? Yeah. That's yeah. The, the, yeah. The goal, yeah. The goal this of the show. This is a crazy so, way to try to get to that. So yeah, yeah the, the goal of the show is to well, find someone to spend the rest of your life with. That is the goal of yeah. the show. Well, Joe is actually engaged from uh, this show. Yeah. Not Bachelorette or Bachelor, but from Bachelor in Paradise. He just yeah. got engaged I'll this probably. time. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we've been together. We're almost at um, six months, but it's, you know. Great, man. That's yeah, awesome. going, That's why he really asked good. when those conversations yeah, I'm like, I'm start. Like, these questions from Michelle or himself. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm, I'm, I can relate. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm 35 years old, so I, I'm, I have those. I feel like I'm, I agree with you. Like, I'm much more honest now than I thought I was when I was 20. When I was 20, I did the same thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm honest. But really, I wasn't <laughs> like I didn't even know who I was. So right, right. I, I, feel I feel like when I'm when you're 20, there's things about yourself that are, you can't even look at, so then they don't count. Yeah, right. like you I can't even, even like get it. to them. So you're like, oh, okay, those don't count. Those aren't real. This there's is who blockage. I am over mm-hmm. here. Yeah, and then yeah. you get to thir- in your, like 30s, mid 30s. You're like, oh crap, I'm literally just like really cooking the books on myself. I better like bring <laughs> all that in to get a, a real complete picture. And when I think that's what makes relationships really work is when both yeah. people are feel confident enough to share the complete picture of themselves. And there's usually a lot of like internal invisible work that happens with each other and on yourself to continue to mm-hmm. show up for a relationship to make it actually work. You know, Jesus yeah. Christ. I feel like we might have to call you on every, uh, oh, no. every season. Yeah. Of show we love to, therapy. Uh, this is Lord, great. <laughs> to to uh, really talk to the couples. Our here, listeners are in good. for a treat. Yeah. Really? Uh, <laughs> we're getting deep. All right. Um, so I'm like, yeah, that needs to be the next song. We're getting deep. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, Andy, you got a, a, a tour coming up in 2022. Can you uh, yeah. tell us oh. about it? Please? Finally going back on That's tour. So exciting. So, so excited. Yeah. We're heading out on tour in February. It's called the Art of Joy mm-hmm. Tour. I'm oh. a lot of pent up excitement to, to let loose on all of my fans. And um, mm-hmm. it's going to be so, so fun. I've missed it desperately. Uh, you know, for me, there's going to be a, a lot more music is coming too. I just had like a super weird quarantine. I'm a, like I said, a super extrovert. And I had to figure out like, oh, what? I think that naturally I am an extrovert. But then also there was just like, I don't like to be alone really yes yes and i had i think a lot of people had to deal with that and like Mm -hmm. why not so i have a lot of self-worth songs coming out which is terrifying Mm -hmm. because that can be really cheesy if you do that wrong but uh (laughs) you know this song damn it feels good to be me is kind of just like it's the latest single it's very much like uh just being it's got to come from you i i I actually hadn't been in therapy yet until quarantine i was so confused by like having to stay in my house that i got into therapy and uh, oh therapy's amazing one day he said, like, um, sounds like you're getting a lot of your validation and worth from things outside of yourself. When you're yeah. hit with like a, a real one, you're like, oh, uh, that's right. So usually yeah. the way that I process those things in my life is I sit down and start writing songs about it. And yeah. damn, it feels good to me. Was it self-worth, I think, is a, like a breeze that you catch sometimes and then it goes away and then you catch it again and then it goes away. And oh, I caught it, I had it, it in the studio. It doesn't have to. Yeah, it doesn't have to, but I think it's a practice. 
Like it's Absolutely. not something you just understand. We love a practice. We love yeah. a practice. We talk about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was like one that uh, I was feeling it and, and, and meant it in the studio. And, uh, and, and it's like a, I, I hope, I love when you make songs that people can use like an mm-hmm. Advil. Like if yes. you're feeling a certain way and you put on a song and it makes you, it actually does do something for you. Takes you mm-hmm. from one place to another place. And this mm-hmm. one does it for me. So I hope it does it for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's really great. And the self-worth, I think, is what's so important, too. Um, yeah. Is there a location or venue that you love to perform in that um, just really, like, resonates with your heart or, like, feels like home that you're excited to go back to? You know, it's really interesting. Uh, the venue, I do care about, but more it's the relationship with the city. Mm-hmm. Like, now, I've been doing this for a long time, so, like, when I get to Boston, it's like, I know what that is. I have a, I've been on many dates with Boston at this point. I don't, like, mm-hmm. have, like, inside jokes with Boston. and I have So, it doesn't, like, you could put us in a barn, and it would be <laughs> unbelievable, because me and that place have a relationship. And it's been really fun mm-hmm. to build those relationships all over. Now, like, I have a relationship in Australia, and there's oh, like a wow. little relationship in the Philippines and like in Florida. And it, so that it's more to me, the city and the relationship with the city that you have. But yeah, there's awesome places. I mean, oh, it's amazing. I mean, we got to play Red Rocks a couple of times. That was incredible. Oh, I wow. want to see a show there. Yeah. Yeah. Or. Yeah. I've never been. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's amazing. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, um, Andy, we really appreciate you taking the time uh to come on thank um, you for before we let me. you go before we we let you go we always play a little game with our guests you want to play a quick game with us Just do it all right yes okay it's very hard it's called okay. this or that <laughs> you just pick <laughs> this or that okay <laughs> okay wait how do you do it again <laughs> <laughs> you got it you got okay. it okay roses or rose roses tiktok or instagram tiktok Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I love I Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Have to follow you. Yeah. Shop online or shop in store? I, I'm still in store. Uh, the conversation <laughs> that came up with me and my wife, I was like sitting with her watching uh, some show. And I'm like, man, during quarantine, isn't it crazy? Like, we're not buying any clothes. And she's over on her phone, like, oh, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> the hell I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm I'm not. Honey, I gotta go get a picture right in now. Store yeah. too. I'm Who's all about in store. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Um, okay, call or text. I'm a, I'm the worst. I call all the time. I, I can still, see that. I, I can call see I'm a caller too, though. Night. Me too. My wife continually is like, people don't like you. Call, like, they don't like you enough to call them all the time. Like, I'm the 6 a.m. I got an idea. Like, call you guys. I'm the worst. Yeah, I'm a call person, too. I'm a call 100%. person. I yeah. miss text messages all the time. I'm like, oh, my bad. Sorry. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm awful. Um. Book or movie? Mm, I really want to be a book guy, but I'm a movie. Yeah, fair. Like I'd be better. Like I'd be more proud of myself if I said book, but I'm movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's everyone's real answer. Yeah. Yes. Um, eighties or nineties? Specifically for the hip hop nineties. Yes. Athleisure or fancy. Oh, it's tough. When you get 37, you're like, athleisure is so comfortable. <laughs> I'm like, like really, athleisure is fancy. I'm really, and especially I have little girls and like in the mornings, um, I'm, it's a struggle to not leave the house with Crocs, to be honest. Oh, yeah. like I know, you, can't, you can't do it. You can't do it, but I want to, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Just do it. Why athleisure. not? It's a Just thing do, now. I know. Exactly. It's totally a thing. All my nieces, they love their clocks. Over, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, champagne or cocktails? So, it's funny. I don't drink alcohol, but I do. I'm the guy that, like, seeks out a good mocktail. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, a little bit of tonic and some, some, some splash of something. So, I yes. guess that's a cocktail. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. A mocktail, definitely. Yeah. Mocktails. Um it's like it's like with the if you're if you don't drink, it's like either a mocktail or you're like, I'll have a ginger ale, you know, with yeah. the bubbles. That's my the like bubbles. champagne and cocktail so, you know, thing. Yeah. I have a lot of my siblings do, uh, have three siblings that don't drink, so yeah. we do that a lot. Um so you travel a lot. Are you a rental house or hotel guy? Um if I'm with the family, rental house. I'm by myself. Mm-hmm. The hotel's great. 
Yeah. Bath or shower? Shower. Dine in or delivery? Again, I'm just in a season in my life where I have a one year old and a four year old. So, <laughs> like when Crocs, you go to a restaurant, jogging pants and oh, yeah, like when you if you take them to a restaurant, it include like you know that a part of that restaurant experience is just going to be a walk around the restaurant so that you don't annoy everyone. So <laughs> at, at the moment, it's dine in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's like delivery. Uh, takeaway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last one. Podcast or radio? Ooh. I mean, I'm pretty deep into podcasts right now. Right answer. We love a podcast. Ding, ding, ding. I, wish you, I, wish, I wish you would have said after this podcast, radio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> after this shit, radio. I'm done. I, 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 have guys. One, I have a season of one that I made uh, of my own that I love to just getting into like deep topics with people and asking them what they what happens when they die and, and what's oh, the best wow. course and part about money. And yeah, yeah. So I love, love that. Nice. Love that. Yeah, no, they're really good and really insightful. So can you tell our followers or tell our followers, tell our listeners where to find you, where to follow you, where you're at, what you do. Yeah. AndyGrammer.com. If you want tickets, uh, if you hit me on TikTok, I love doing like duets. I think it's oh, so I'm fun looking for you on create, TikTok like, right now. to create like a, a sound bed and then let everybody write songs over it. Um, and then Instagram and Facebook and all that. Oh yeah, look at you on TikTok, killing it! Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go yes, hard. Like, I literally, I couldn't Spotify, do Spotify, YouTube. So I went so hard. At, yeah, Spotify, YouTube, all of it. Yeah. Nice, hey, come on nice. tour! Oh my God, please come see, come hang out on tour. It's, I, I cannot wait. How many everybody. cities? I think it's like twenty-five or something like that. That's Are awesome. you going to be in Chicago, New York, or Nashville? Definitely in Chicago and New York. Are we in Nashville? No. Not on this run, but we might be announcing more things soon. Uh, so you got to you gotta come to New York or Nashville. <laughs> Do you got to yeah. come to New York or Chicago? <laughs> yeah. I was ready yeah, anyway. super exciting. Cool. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> All right, Andy. Well, thank you so yeah, much for taking delight. the time. Thank you for thank having you. me. What a thank you so much for being here. Have a good yes, one. And thank you. This good is luck really with great. Tour. All right. Thanks, guys. Later. Yes. Later. Bye. So that was... Um, it was Andy Grammer, everyone. <laughs> All right. That was Andy Grammer. Andy Grammer. Um, yeah, Our guests cool. have been so good. Yeah. Was yeah. yeah no, he was great. That was so great. What a treat. I mean, our listeners are going to get such a, I mean, th this relationship advice, we all need it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he was, especially from myself, someone that knows. Yeah, he was getting, uh, he was getting He's deep. getting deep. He really I saw was. you writing, taking notes, Joe. I saw no, you No, I was there. not. I was not. I, listen, I'm fine, okay? No, I'm kidding. I know he I felt know, like I he know. was, was, he was trying to be like, no offense, but, but I was like, so you're saying we're all very attractive is what you're saying. <laughs> and we shouldn't get wrapped up in that. Okay, so we're all I did attractive. not. I did not take not that offended. to you, but I got you. No, no, well, how about at the, be the beginning of the interview, I was like, uh. I'm like you're a positive guy that's your thing right <laughs> he's like, like sure <laughs> yeah it's like, okay. and then you turned it and then you go so this deep place this deep dark place that that comes from <laughs> he's like now that you bring it up i had the shittiest quarantine <laughs> uh, well i just know he is like that's like i why i you know when we get a guest on for our listeners i do my research and that's something he says in all his interviews he's a positive person that's his thing <laughs> And then he also says, like, you had, you know, you but like to write music, it's got to be from a dark place. So it's like, well, or is he like, or is he like, uh, like he's the one who's like, I'm a positive person, I'm a positive person. He's like pecking his eye out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that was me before I got into mindfulness, y'all. Yeah, I was a crazy person. I was yeah, so, we all are. so we happy all. now. I'm so happy. We are, we, all. We, we all are. I swear. All right. Well, great episode. Uh, let's wrap this shit. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you to our listeners and thank you to Andy Grammer. Make sure you vote for the seven People's Choice Awards The Bachelor is nominated for. Our boy Joe, Ooh. for sure. Head to votepca.com. Joe is for reality contestant of 2021, Bachelor in Paradise reality TV show of 2021. Wait, those yes. are the categories? The, no, yes, those, the, are the, those are the, um, the, the, awards. Uh, the awards. Even the, though the, I, the I'm, not, I'm actually not going for reality contestant. I'm going for reality star of the year. So oh. uh, just saying. No, no. I got to go. My computer about to hang up. <laughs> I'm joking. Star. But as always, as always, make sure to subscribe and submit all your burning questions. Check us out on social. Like, comment, DM us. You know where to find us at ClickbaitBN on Instagram, Bachelor Nation on Twitter, and Bachelor Nation on Facebook and TikTok. We are also casting for the upcoming seasons of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. 
Um, I know, I hear you guys are listening to this. I know you want to try it out. So <laughs> go out there, submit um, bachelornation.com slash apply to nominate yourself or somebody else that you think is going to be really great. Just don't give them a notebook with notes to bring. <laughs> And share your stories with us. We want to know what clickbait you guys are getting into this week. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Wondery app, or wherever you guys are listening right now. And we'd love to hear your feedback on Instagram as well. Peace.